Hi, my name is Desanti Cardin, and I podcast about self-improvement and entrepreneurship. I have interviewed a lot of important entrepreneurs in the past on this show, so if you are an aspiring entrepreneur or just want to learn about self-improvement in general, I would definitely check those interviews out because they have a lot of important things to say. My solo segments are mostly self-improvement slash entrepreneurship slash social media marketing. I've been self-employed for seven years. Most of my income comes from social media for the past two years, so I will share my journey on that so that you can possibly pursue a similar lifestyle. My YouTube channel is about systemizing your life and controlling where you put your time, focus, into so check that out if you haven't yet i just released merch for this podcast it is at shoptoughluck.com it is my first merch drop for this podcast and i'm very excited about it because i think it represents the brand very well it says the world owes you nothing on the front and then tough luck on the sleeve i don't know go check it out it's pretty cool Anyways, today's episode is about how to get out of a rut because I myself am in a huge rut right now. I think I know how I got here. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. I think also people have been reaching out to me asking how to get out of a rut and I'm like, girl, I'm right there with you. So I know I'm not the only one right now. Everyone is feeling like this sort of just kind of tired of everything we've been through this past year and... Especially now we're feeling the effects of not really socializing with people or not having the same activities that we would usually have. I tend to have these weird periods of when I'll be really down for like a week or two. It's been like three weeks now. I'm still kind of productive through it, but I know I'm not at the peak mental level that I usually am. The first thing you want to look at though whenever you are going through something mentally is what you're eating, what you're drinking, what you're putting into your body. Some things that I would look at are how much sugar you're consuming and if you're getting enough omega-3s because that has everything to do with what chemicals your brain is releasing and if you don't have enough omega-3s then your mind can produce anxious levels. So I would look at that before anything make sure you're consuming a well-rounded diet style of eating make sure you're drinking a lot of water because your body is made up of 70 percent water so it's very important for you to be giving your body and brain exactly what it needs to be at peak performance of course that is not all of it i'm still doing that and still feel this way so what else can we do the first thing that we look at is how the brain actually operates so your brain has your feeling brain and then your thinking brain separated into two which one would be the primal brain which is your animal instinct and then the other would be the prefrontal cortex which is your thinking brain your active brain so one is the automatic thing that your brain does as a human animal the other thing is what you're actively thinking and feeling as a person, as a human person. So both of these two together, in order for you to be performing at an optimal level, they have to agree on what they want to do that day. So if you, if your thinking brain is thinking, oh, I want to get all of this done and I want to be really productive today, but then your animal brain is like, hey, I want to lay down or like, hey, I'm really like not feeling it today then you're gonna have a clash and then you're gonna feel like why do I feel like this I feel like shit I'm I don't want to say the d word because words matter so much but honestly I have it I have a long history of depression coming up and so I think that's why now that I've gotten to a point where I understand it then it's a lot easier to just understand that nothing is linear again I say that a lot there's so many waves in being a human (laughs) human person (laughs) like I chose to be a human person but there's gonna be ups and downs all the time and so this is just one of my lows this is just one of your lows what are we gonna do we just have to get through it there's a cycle of inspiration to motivation that leads to action right so I guess generally you would picture this as you get inspired then you get 
motivated to do something and then you act on it. The way to look at it wouldn't be a straight line, like I first need to get inspired and then I'll get motivated and then I'll want to do something. If we look at this as a cycle of inspiration, motivation, and action, then we could technically jump into the cycle at any point that we want. So we're going to start with action because you can do small tasks to make you get you physically moving because when you get yourself physically moving it releases I don't want to say which chemical because it might be wrong I'm not a doctor by the way I'm not a therapist this is not gonna replace anything that you should be doing um, regarding any sort of psychology or professional help I'm just sharing with you what I found on the internet and what I has helped me. So if we tell the body to move and we're doing a physical movement, then it's going to trigger in your brain to now want to do more things, right? This is a theory that we're going to test out with little things here and there that we're going to get up and do. So if we enter in the cycle in the action part, then the next thing would be the motivation and then the next thing would be the inspiration see so now we're taking advantage of it circling back around and then from you having a little bit of physical movement you're triggering other things in your brain to then want to do other things as well but if your animal brain still holds back or or lashes out and and makes you not want to do that thing then you should listen to it and stop what you're doing take a little break, reward yourself for taking the time to do that little task, and then do it again in a couple hours. Because the two parts of your brain need to work together as one instead of you being mad at yourself for being depressed and your other part of your brain not letting you do anything because you're unmotivated, and then it's just not a good balance. So you need to kind of baby yourself get up and brush your teeth or wash your face that is actually refreshing too because it releases chemicals whenever your face touches cold water so you could do that and then feel really really fucking good about it and then move on to another small task and then massage your way into these small tasks and then maybe add a little bit more of intrication to it the next time that you do it your brain doesn't know the difference between the amount of progress that you're doing so if you do a small amount of progress versus you complete this big task on your to-do list, your brain doesn't feel the difference chemically between something that might have been meaningless to your prefrontal cortex brain versus something that is huge. Your animal brain doesn't know the difference. It just recognizes progress. So eventually, whenever you stack up progress, 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 your brain is going to feel like you're getting a lot done, which is positive and really good, and you should reward yourself for it because eventually it's going to get you out of this rut that you're in. Also, whenever I started to feel like this, I haven't actually given myself the time to indulge in anything yet. I've I've still been pushing myself really hard working every day on YouTube, podcast content creating. I've been doing TikTok a lot. I haven't really given myself a break, so I think I need a hard reset. And if you haven't given yourself a hard reset, then you should take a break too and maybe take a day where you indulge in something that you really enjoy. That way that you have time to not think about things. Maybe you're overwhelmed. Maybe you're overworked. Maybe you have a lot going on. So if you can find time to do a hard reset, then I would do that. I'm going to try that next, maybe tomorrow. Another cool thing would be changing your environment. I started working in the living room all day and it made me feel good because there's a lot of light in that room and it's just positive. Um, I didn't feel good working in my room all day, so maybe tomorrow I'll go somewhere else. I'm not sure. Actually, no, tomorrow's going to be my reset day, so I'm not going to work tomorrow. But after that, I may switch to like the dining room area or something. So changing your environment is super important. Actually, what's super important too is cleaning your room. I was watching a lot of YouTube videos on how to get out of a rut yesterday. And one of the first things all of them said was clean your room, reorganize, and declutter. I organized my room a couple days ago, then it got messy again. I honestly have like a laundry basket right now that I've been neglecting for like a week because I just haven't felt like putting it up. I know that something's wrong because I'm like not doing the small tasks that I would 
normally always be on top of. Like I didn't take the trash out for like a week. I just took that out this morning and cleaned my room before I, I recorded this. So I'll probably put the laundry up later. I don't know. We're doing one step at a time and I rewarded myself when I cleaned my room because I just felt good about it. I might get myself coffee later. Do not look at any other person and compare yourself because that will kill you. Compare yourself to who you were a couple hours ago or what you did in the morning that was productive. For example, I did not do my morning routine this morning, but I put makeup on. So that's a step for me, which I it's like rare for me to put makeup on, but it was recording day, so I was like, I really need to push myself to record, and then I'll... So I did my makeup, and I felt really good about it afterwards, and I took some pictures, and it was pretty nice. Remember that every step back is not a definite step back, because you're about to take two steps forward, and also think of it as a recalibration, not a step back. You're just kind of refeeling your way into it. Another thing also is to feel it out. For example, whenever I was really sad last night, I started playing guitar, made me feel a little better, or lay there. Stretching really helps whenever I'm sad because you just feel every inch of your body, just movement. Also, a book that really helped me get out, like, I think, get out of a really bad depressive state when I was younger was The Five Second Rule by, by Mel Robbins. And it talks about something I talked about earlier in this podcast was, but she has a, an actual tool that you can use for it. So actually, yeah, let's talk about that because that's really important. The Five Second Rule, basically the concept of connecting your moving brain with your physical body with your brain. So it's counting down from five Every time you want to do something like get out of bed, get up and walk, um, get up and do a task, get up and brush your teeth, you count down from five. And then when you get down to the one, your brain, your animal brain, is going to feel the impulse, not the impulse, the it's going to feel the push to move. Even if you break down the move, like if I have a hard time getting out of bed, I will count down from five five, four, three, two, one, and then I move like the blanket. Or you shoot up like a rocket. Five, four, three, two, one, you shoot out of bed. And that's how she describes it in the in the book, how she got herself out of a huge depressive state. And now she's a really, really big figure in the self-improvement spokesperson in the self-improvement niche on the internet. It happens to everybody, guys. It's gonna be okay. Here's a little excerpt from the five second rule by Bill Robbins. It says, your feelings don't matter. The only thing that matters is what you do. The five second rule, the moment you have an instinct to act on your goal, you must five, four, three, two, one, and physically move or your brain will stop you. I was the problem and in five seconds I could push myself to become the solution. It says, start before you are ready. Don't prepare, just begin. Hesitation is the kiss of death. You might hesitate for just the nanosecond and that's all it takes. That one small hesitation triggers a mental system that's designed to stop you and it happens in less than five seconds. There will always be someone who can't see your worth. Don't let it be you. Passion is not a thing, it's a state of mind. We are also afraid of uncertainty that we want a guarantee before we even try. We want evidence that if we take a risk, we will get the girl. It's a numbers game. To play any game, you have to start. To win, you need to keep going. If you want to make your dreams come true, you need to get ready for the long game. Life is not a one and done sort of deal. You've got to work for what you want. Picasso created nearly a hundred masterpieces in his lifetime, but what most people don't know is that he created a total of more than 50,000 works of art. That's two pieces of art a day. Holy shit. Success is a numbers game. You're not going to win if you keep telling yourself to wait. The more often that you choose courage, the more likely you'll succeed. You aren't battling your ability to stick to a diet or execute a business plan, repair a broken marriage, or rebuild your life, hit your goals, or win over a bad manager. You're actually battling your feelings about doing it. You're more than capable of doing the work to change anything for the better despite how you feel. So you're already capable, it's just your thinking brain that's getting in the brain of your primal brain. Feelings are merely suggestions, ones you can ignore. To change, you must do the same. You must ignore how you feel and just do it anyway. And pushing yourself to take simple actions creates a chain reaction in your confidence and your productivity. Those are some of my favorite quotes from The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. 
that pot that thought the thought of this book just popped up in my head as I was recording this episode it wasn't even in the show notes that I had for this show but thank you so much for listening and we're gonna push through this it happens to everybody it is literally so common and unrealistic to just be at top performance level all the fucking time if you haven't seen my how i organize my tasks youtube video yet go check that one out i have a screen share calendar of my hormones calendar on there that is on my the last youtube video i don't mention it at all but if you go look at it that's my feelings calendar because everyone with a period goes through different hormone cycles that is not talked about often at all they don't teach you this anywhere you have to look it up this is the time where i feel intuitive and calm basically everyone with a period has a different week where you feel differently so for example this week I'm slowing down and looking inward is what it says and so that's essentially what I'm why I'm feeling I think a little lower than usual next week it says I should feel social and problem solving the week after that I will feel confident and social confident so the the cycle of four weeks is the first week you slow down and look inward the second week is higher energy levels you feel social and problem solving the third week you feel confident and social the fourth week you feel intuitive and calm and that is typically at the course of a month but it just depends on where you're at in your cycle i encourage everyone with a period to go look into this type in on google the brain during the menstrual cycle and it'll help you kind of get a glimpse of what your hormones are doing throughout the month and it's kind of helped me be like okay this is what i'm supposed to be feeling like this month it changes every time but it's a cool thing that i do keep track of now that helps me schedule things where i that I need to be social in and weeks that I will be social in. But yeah, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening to Tough Luck Podcast. If you're not following me on social media yet, all of my social medias are at Desanti Carden. Please leave a five-star review if you're on Apple Podcasts and subscribe if you're on Spotify. I love you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.